with another episode of My Car Story, and we're here with Larry Reed in his collection, and we've got a new car for Larry. Larry, what you're making model is this one? This is a 1919 Pierce Arrow. It's, um, it's also listed as a 20. It was actually built in 1919, but, and it's uh, licensed as a, as a 19, but it also shows up as a 20. This is one of four cars that were uh, built. There's only two existing in this. It's an unusual um, company. They made 22 different platforms each year. So there is very, very low uh, turnout for, for each platform. So and that was maybe because of, of the cost. It was cost and it was uh, inefficient uh, manufacturing. <laughs> so. so let me go right to our profile. Come right alongside me, Larry. Okay. This is a 6,000 pound roadster. So think about this, it's 1919. By the way, you specifically put it next to a H1 Hummer in the background to give you some size and perspective of how big this sports roadster is. So I guess we'll start in the back because the front's gonna have a lot to it. Now, Larry, you were sharing no chrome at this time, so this is all nickel. Why is there no chrome in this time? Chrome wasn't invented until 1926. That would cause it to be a problem in 1919. And this is where the mother-in-law would sit. That's right, that folds up, prop it out here. Now, obviously, you could fit anybody else, what we're, but it's called the mother-in-law seat. <laughs> That's gotta be. And when it folds down, the silhouette changes dramatically. Um, really, let's fold yeah. it down. Can we, hold, can we pull this down? Well, while he's folding it down to get that dramatic look, here's where your luggage goes in the custom Pierce. Taylor, thank you for helping out. So here we have our custom leather piece here. Larry, this is very interesting. Tell me about these gas shocks and how do these work? These are made by Westinghouse and they're a, a gas with sand in them and, and air. She filled up the air and these show that uh, again. It's just these shock absorbers cost eleven hundred dollars a pair. You got to remember this is nineteen nineteen. Eleven hundred dollars so, in nineteen nineteen. That's a pair, and this has this car has two pair on them. So this was an option. You can see the air in it. You you filled up the air, or you could take the air down, depending. Notice that air comes out of there. And remember, this car weighs six thousand pounds. This is so. Is this an oil filler here? Yes. There. Go ahead. This weighs 6,000 pounds, so uh, you have to have some pretty decent shock absorbers. They, they uh, created this for this car. And you'll see Westinghouse on several other cars later on. This is the first year that, that I had seen it. This is an interesting luggage piece. Remember, there's only 120 miles of, of uh, paved road in 1919. So I, I can't see you driving down in rutted roads and things with a leather suitcase right. carrier. I don't know what that would look like later on. Yeah. That's an option that would probably be here's, pretty Here's expensive. where our gas goes. Yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's so the so the easy question for me. Now you can see the... the yeah, let me show the profile all again. So that's what it looks like with it flattened out. Let me take it all the way back oh, isn't that because the perspective of this car and the size of it 6,000 pound roadster. It's kind of mentally hard to believe. Luke, let it? me walk over here, Please. if you don't mind. I'm six feet, two inches yeah. tall. And if you see this, this is over seven feet. There's 6'2 yeah. Larry, who looks uh, like a, uh, he just stepped off the Wizard of Oz Lilliputian compared to this thing right here. I don't know why I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but little little Larry as we look at him next to this car. Yeah. This is so high to be able to ship this in our trailer, we have to take the top down and take the uh, turn, windshield down. Turn it into a total roadster. Yeah, so the windshield huge. comes down there, and you can see the cranks to take that down. Mm -hmm. And even, look at the spotlights on this vehicle with the glass. And you've got a rear view mirror back here. Of course, your rear view mirror is there. The writing on the spotlight, I'll see if I can get that. Now, Luke, one of the things that's really unique about this car this car was restored in the, in the early to mid-60s, and it was restored up in the Pacific Northwest 
for the owner who was out of Texas. And he, he the fellow got, uh, did, a, did a wonderful job. I have all of the, the pictures and everything of the restoration. It's a major restoration. But in restoring this, he got so excited about it. When he finished it, he pinstriped it, and he put his own initials on it. This is the initial of the fellow that wow. restored the car, not the owner. <laughs> <laughs> and the owner kept it, though. Yes, and people have asked me, are you going to take that off? Is it absolutely not. Yeah, that, no, that, Hal. That, that makes it's, it a, a fun car. part of the car. That yep. is great. Let me just uh, let me show the, the rims here as well. Now, we've got wood rim. Those are wood rim. Wood rim painted, and yep. there's maybe a better view of that. And you can see the Pierce arrow there listed accordingly, the big valve stem, the bolts. 35 inch. 35 inch. Let's go to the interior, shall we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a handle here. Am I pulling up properly? A little more pull. Just got it open. Got it. We've got our pouch there. This is a, yeah, this is a map pouch. You put your maps in. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we have in here. Oh, this is the registration and insurance okay. on it. <laughs> From Texas. Yep. And then uh, you have your flashlight with you? I do. All right. Well, I feature some of these gauges. Just, we'll feature that right there. You know, um, if Even, you're going to have Taylor in there, this might be a, a use the flashlight and he can, he can walk you through the instrumentation. Go ahead. Here. So here's our instrumentation. Taylor, how do we, what do we have here? We this have looks a, like a clock. A clock, an odometer, and a ampers gauge, fuel gauge, and a oil pressure gauge. Okay. And those are your controls for the dual distributors, the lights, and the starting button. It looks like we have no gas. Yeah, well, well you okay. need electricity to read the gauge. Okay, gotcha. Okay, good. <laughs> and, and you're going to show... We're going to take a ride at me and you. That's right. And you're going to show me how this all works. So here's your accelerator, correct? Our all nickel controls. All nickel controls. And and by the way, a great horn. A great. All right, we'll we'll Make blow sure that we we'll blow that bugle, bugle when yeah. we get to that. That's great. Show me. Uh, you should blow that once in here. All right, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Let it blow. I think you, you, yeah. Where's the button for the bugle? Right there. All right. It also requires electricity. Okay, so we we turn it on. So we got it. Ground our battery with a positive ground. <laughs> Let me go on the other side to see it. Holy cow! That that is truly the Ioga horn. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> It's like the Pied Piper. The kids come out of the houses. <laughs> <laughs> it, I can't it, makes, wait. it makes everybody laugh. I can't it's wait. Fun, well, fun. And let me show you the front of the size of this vehicle. So it looks actually thin compared to the length. Because of the height. Because of the height. Yeah. This is this is real unique. The the uh, the lights attached to the outside of the of the although they att attach to the fender. That really didn't come in in the fender until 1939. So this was 20 years before. Way ahead of its time. Yeah. Yep. The great. The motometer, that's how you read the temperature. An original motometer stamped by Pierce Arrow. That is great. All right, go ahead. Let's open one side at a time, shall we? Each one of these sides is different and gorgeous all at the same time. Larry, what do we have here now? What's unique about this, this is three blocks. You can see this. Here's one head. Here's another head, and here's another head. Shine that light as you should. Yeah. Yeah. This you can see. This head goes to right here. The second head goes to here, and here's the third head. Oh yeah. Here's the dual ignition. Okay. If you notice, there's 12 spark plugs and 12 uh, wires coming down the coil, and there's 12 over here. Okay. So uh, are you, there's six on each side. Excuse me. So most people look at this and they count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They say, wow, this is a straight 12. This is a straight 6. 
remember it's got dual ignition. Got it. Now, because we have three separate heads here, we have an oiling system that needs to, to lubricate within that. So here's one, let me see, here's one oil filler, and this fills for this section. Here's the second one oh, that boy. does this. Here's the third one. Here's the dual distributor caps. Brass water pump. Yeah, brass water pump, yeah. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Let's go over and take a look at the other side. And you get all of your valves over there. Yeah, lifting. there you go. You can see the valves, and we'll, we'll do this after he starts it up so yeah. you can see those moving. Okay. It's fabulous. There's a lot of older cars uh, they were exposed up until about 30. And all nickel. That's that horn you just heard. Yeah. Fall press. Notice there's no rear view mirror here. It's actually here. Rear view mirror is here. The rear view mirror over there is on the spotlight. The back dual the spotlight. wheels here. I'm not sure what this is for right here. I guess that limits the amount of, of light that comes out mm. to the side. So here you have coming out of the radiator, it's coming down here. This somehow, and we haven't figured this out yet, this is the, the um, intake manifold. You see the, see the um, carburetor, mm -hmm. all of that. And it's a side draft carburetor here, rather unique one. And it's all stamped Pierce Arrow. 1919. Yeah, 1919 right there. You see? Just keep that light right there for a second. Let sure. me catch up. Okay, go to the other one, the one below it. Mm -hmm. I can't uh, see that. You yeah, no, it. it'll. The camera will pick it up. Yeah. Here's just show show that thing right there. Let me take that for a second. Okay. I just gonna do that. Sure. And there's a sight glass to see the prime. There's your sight glass we're talking about. Right down here. Yep. I got it. You can see just the stamping and the words here. Also, I noticed here and here. Your little gas cups to prime it. Mm -hmm. That's magnificent. Is that is it heavy? It is six thousand. Just about no, six thousand. No, no, is this heavy? The hood. Oh no, that's all right. Not too bad. I'm very strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a brought a strong man. It's very see good. Exposed flywheel in the back. Though. Oh yeah. Let's there, let's take that. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. Lots of exposed gearing. Good. All right. Now let's let's see how you would change a tire. You've got a couple of tires here. And remember, you're on rock or mud. Mud ruts during the winter, and during the summer it's rock and it's like quarter minus or it's sharp. So you've cut a lot of tires. But if you take a look at how this is, the rim is bolted. Remember, you've got to jack this up. You've got to take this all off, and then this fits on. You can see here how it fits onto the rim. Oh, yeah. Well, there's only a lock in a few places. It's, uh, it's kind of amazing. If you, if you take a look at it, see that one's open. This one's open. It looks like a split rim there. But see this? This is locked. This, this lock and that's locked. There's, there's what, four of them there? And the rest, you know. Yeah. Yikes. And this is your speedometer sensor. Oh, yeah, that's really neat. That is. Look at that. Look at the gearing on that. Yeah, that is super cool. Let me just even see if I can get it from this angle, too. Let's see if we can get a light in there. Oh, yeah. There's also an oiling cup in here. So when you're, when you're headed out for church on Sunday, make sure that you fill the get oiling the cup before you go, or you won't have a correct speed. Got it. Yeah, now, okay. Remember, honestly, the speed in this car is probably between 30 and 35 miles an hour. Top speed. And quite frankly, you wouldn't want to be in it. And the cubic inches is? Uh, 525. And the horsepower is 48. 48. Wow. Okay. Now, see this? This is, uh, for some reason, they were, they were very security conscious because there's, there's uh, key locks on this side, on that side, all around this car. And you get a bag. Can you grab that bag? You get a bag of, of keys.
keys that go, everything is locked on this car. Wow. So if you can imagine breaking down and then at night and trying to figure which key goes in which lock, here's a bag of Holy keys cow. that came with the car. <laughs> it is. All right. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. So. Absolutely amazing. I think that's, that's about it for the exterior. It's uh, now the, the, uh, the driving compartment. One thing you didn't notice is this car was made in Buffalo, New York, and it's right-hand drive. Oh, yeah. So it has the European influence. Very few American cars have right-hand drive. I didn't notice that. I'm glad and you brought that to my attention. You can also note that the driver can't get in. Yeah, you're not getting in this. And if you see this, see these are, these are locked on here. If you see this, oh, the, yeah. the tires, the spare tires, and up there, so you have to get in on that side. Yeah, this is this is one entrance only. Yep. And but he didn't forget to put his initials on it, Hal. <laughs> We'd love to meet Hal. That is great. <laughs> he sounds like a real character. Yeah. And even just looking at the roof line here, the woodworking that went here, and your one windshield. Wiper. I That's think it's true. lined up, but we haven't quite figured it out. All right. Well, let's uh, let's figure out, let's figure out how we start it, and we'll show the engine running, and then we'll take a ride. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Right. Okay. So just before we started and take a ride, you guys know I like the trunk and treats. Look at this authentic stuff. Pittsburgh, PA. Notice the word. Here's arrow there, okay, so you can see all the, the valve, go ahead, what is it? It's a tire pressure gauge that you put a balloon on, Schrader valve. I've never seen something like Pierce that. Pierce arrow, stamped, only 10 to 42 pounds. Isn't that cool? And it's it comes original in its leather. Original pouch. That is coming apart. That's all right. But it's it's all there. Look at this. Isn't this great? Look at that. My wrenches. And then we get our Pierce Aero motor cars. You didn't have a brochure of the car back then. It was really just about care. And then we have this is it says year 20, model 51. That's because that's when it was sold. Yeah, titled in 1919, sold in 1920. And here's your schematic. And I'll just take you a little deeper on some of those. And I'll pause so that you could see. Because you're working on your own vehicle back in this time frame. And if you have a right-hand drive Pierce Arrow like the other three people in the world, <laughs> you get to see it. So let me show you this. That's what it looked like at one point. And that, which of course now you've seeing the end result, which is that. And of course, we'll show you the motor, which we already have. Well, let's go for our ride. All right, so I've got Taylor here. And Taylor, tell us what we're doing to get this thing started. So we're going to set our idle to about mid-range. OK. We're going to turn our very futuristic fuel pump on. Got it. We're going to set the ignition to double ignition since we have two ignitions. Okay. We do a little bit of prime, but we should be pretty primed already. There's a priming button down here that you hit with your foot. Okay. And we should be good to go.
clutch, throttle, brake. Clutch, throttle, brake. Throttle in the middle. Got it. Which is not how it is today. No. How long did it take you to learn how to ride drive this? Oh, about five minutes or so. Okay, all right. So what did you just do here? I just dropped it into our granny gear. We are off. <laughs> this is how you got strong. Yes. Larry's got you in the uh, the workout the wheel. Yes. Rhodium 45. Rhodium 45. Uh, Rhodium 45 workout uh, methodologies. So I just dropped it into our second gear because we don't really need the grainy to get going. Top speed on this is just about 40, which we're doing maybe 20, 25 right now. But it feels like we're going. I don't know if it's the height of this thing or what. Yeah, definitely it feels like you're going faster than you are. So, so the important question is, you know, do you think this? Do you take this out on dates? Do you? This is the only way to do it. <laughs> this is how you get the girls. Yeah. You show them your muscles by trying to turn this thing. Let's see if you can do a U-turn. Yeah, we put their boyfriends in the back. <laughs> That's a powerful move. You actually pulled that turn. I was surprised. I've done it once or twice. All right. Yeah, you're experienced driver of this behemoth. I am the one who knows how to start. <laughs> that is great. I have the power. Wow, listen to those pants. Here we oh, go. Got a backfire. Yeah, that was good. That'll happen when it's a little cool. And if you can smell it too. That little smell. Oh yeah. Imagine being in New York City in the 20s with all these things just pumping gas. That is great. People are just out looking. That is great. Well, we didn't take it for too long of a ride because, well, this is good. But what a great time. Thanks so much, Taylor, for taking me out. Thanks for using those muscles. Thanks for being on my car. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Thank you. Thank you, Lou.